Goodbye, my love. Silver bullet, number three. Fishing freaks, welcome on back to the channel. We just spent the first hour of the day unloading the silver bullet. We're gonna take it up to Fun and Sun today and we're gonna drop it off for good. There's a slight chance we might get a peep at the new boat. I know they're rigging it and doing all that stuff, so it might be, you know, in the garage, you know, in pieces right now, but it's happening. Another cool development is there's some people that have bought my 2019 boat and they're Google Squad fans. Uh, they thought it'd be cool if I could sign the boats. Fun and Sun asked me, I was like, yeah, of course. But I don't think they know that I'm gonna go up there today. So I think they're gonna try to get us to, to meet up. So we can meet them, send, the, send the, uh, the old silver bullet off. I will say I'm a little bit sad to get rid of this boat right here, this FXR. It is, I'm gonna say it is my favorite boat that I've ever owned. It is the best uh, riding boat. Now, I've been in some other boats, you know, I've been in old Rangers, I've been in Bass Cats, like that just take rough water like, like a champ. Uh, but this one takes rough water really well. It's the best ride I've had on a Skeeter. I think they, they did some good, you know, performance things on this one. They just made it heavier. It almost kind of like went to a to an old like Bass Cat Ranger sort of thing, you know, made it heavier, deeper V, and I like that. So I'm, it will be missed. But I'm excited to try out a new boat and give it a good hard dangle. So let me show you guys what is going on here. Let me just show you the tackle pref. Pref pref so let me just show you the tackle plethora that is happening right now. So I just pulled everything out. The garage is an absolute mess. I'm, I'm getting also getting my tackle ready to head up to the Great Lakes. You know, just a total switch up from Texas fishing. So I've got all my boxes sitting in here in the garage, just stacked up amongst tools and, and chicken stuff. And I'm trying to like separate from like my, <laughs> my Great Lakes trip with stuff that's going back into the boat. Like when I get back, there's gonna be a new boat. It's just a lot, there's a lot going on right now. I've got it all scattered out in buckets and boxes and, and crates. And this happens every time I get a new boat. You know, there's all these little knickknacks that end up inside of there and you just pull them out. You know, you try to organize and then you're just like, all right, I'm just gonna pull it all out. Throw it in a box and it ends up being like this. There's a new animal here at the treehouse. This little squirrel. He seems pretty tame. I'm thinking I might be able to get him to eat out of my hand. Pretty sure a squirrel would eat these. Look. It's looking right at these little worms. I know you want some. Come on. Yeah, okay. A little scared. All right. I'll take these, feed them to the chickens. Yeah, I know. Num, 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 num. So before we get into dangle strategy, tackle prep, we're gonna go drop the old silver bullet off. Just unhitched it here at Fun and Sun. Goodbye, my love. Silver bullet number three. And we're going in. Uh, bandito buck. Red bug. Okay, I guess I'll get y'all started. I figured everybody's fishing. I'm, I've seen the lakes more packed this year than I ever have. Well, it's good for fishing. You did never guess. Hang on one second. I'm gonna get one of these reels. up with some baits and they're taking the old silver bullet they're about to hook it up I gotta say she looks good too but we're about to see the brand new the incoming incoming hot silver bullet we got Monty here 
we're gonna take a look for the first time at the new the new vessel. The vessel. See how it goes. So it's not fully fully rigged yet. They're gonna rig it all out while I'm up in the in the Great Lakes and get it going. I I be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about what is here. So we're learning this together. I just know it's a new boat. And we got the old silver bullet rolling out. These folks about to go enjoy a good dangle. Oh my, this is it. The silver, silver bullet Phoenix with a Merc. This is a four stroke Mercury. Last time I ran a Pro XS, it was, uh, they were two strokes. So a lot has changed. That thing is huge. It's Jagundis. Peeling it back, first time. Mercury installed these at the factory. And this is it. Woo! God, that thing is shiny. That is sparkly. Look at it. That is the exact color of a Coors Light can if I've ever seen one. Mm, here we go. So this is kind of a bear. It's barren. We got electronics, all this stuff. I'm going to be showing you guys. We got new electronics. They're not hummingbirds. New trolling motor. I have never ran one of these. So this is going to be all new experience. I'm going to be showing you guys when I get back. We're going to go through the layout, the rigging, all the bells and whistles, but it is the new silver bullet. And it is quite silver. And we're here at the Guggen HQ, y'all, where all the baits live. I got to get a few things for the great north. And as you guys know, smallmouth, they're very infested up there. Great fishing. Really, they have seasons on them, so they don't get fished for as much as fish down here, and they can be just voracious monsters beautiful bronze backs i love fishing for them we're going to be doing some other species as well up there having a good time but i i really don't have in my personal collection any 3.3 uh saucy swimmers because most of the time i don't throw anything that small down here i'm going to load up on these i'm going to load up on uh rattling neds and anything small mouthy we can get some line and things like that some top waters any all smallmouth danglers out there, let me know your favorite colors for smallmouth. I know you can't go wrong with a green pumpkin. I know translucent colors are really good up there, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to matter. Hopefully, if it's as good as they say it is. I've heard reports of like 200 smallmouth a day in one of the areas we're going to. I don't know. I usually divide things in half by, you know, from what I hear, because by the time you get there, the bite's either over or you know it's not as good. So, but. It's gonna be some insane action, so subscribe right here to the channel if you want to stay tuned for some of that. I got a bunch of these 3.3s. Um, I got a bunch of rattling nets. I have a feeling this is probably what we're gonna be throwing mostly. Everything else I pretty much have in the arsenal. I have also heard spinner baits are really good, so I'm gonna take some of our zingers up there. Uh, but I'm gonna make some modifications, some smallmouth modifications to some of the zingers. I'm gonna put some painted blades. These are like what I would consider the best all-around blade combos for wherever you are. You got Colorado Willow. You know, with all of my stuff, I always like to customize a little bit with jigs, anything with skirts to kind of match the, the situation the best. Smallmouth are weird. They like really showy stuff. So I've got some painted blades. I might spruce a couple of those up and just leave a couple natural the way they are see what works best you know i'm a tinkerer i like to tinker in the garage speaking of tinkering i was just walking back to my tackle cave to put some stuff up and i saw the old no shoulder the old danger noodle so he's around here somewhere i hate when you lose a snake oh there he is okay this is a rat snake a big long rat snake stephanie is not here otherwise she would be freaking out but that is a big, just actually that's not a big one, but that's a, just a long snake right there. It's not poisonous. They eat, you know, mice, rodents, whatever. So that's good around here. I would say the only threat is to the chickens. Now that definitely will eat chicken eggs. But I, you know, those big hens, they would probably get after one that size. They'd probably bite its face off, to be honest with you. Now's the difficult time where I have to condense 
I'm gonna try to get everything in one bag if that's possible. Besides the rods, obviously, rod too. But try to get everything into one bag. I'm hoping we just get on a hard bait bite, you know? And that way you don't have to go through plastics like crazy. Like you, you throw top water, you throw those spinner baits. But man, when you start getting into plastics with, with small mouth and there's as many as I think there are, you better be loaded up. I haven't done a chicken check yet today. Quick chicken check for you guys. What were chicks, they're now full grown pullets. And they're starting to get their adult clucks, like their adult sounds, instead of those little, you know, peeps. Especially this barred rock right here, you can really tell. She's got a full blown squawk going on. The duck is starting to lose his feathers. He's molting right now and he's getting his adult feathers, so he's starting to get a green head. And obviously, you know, he has that drake sound to him, that like, whack whack. Still getting two eggs a day from the little red chickens. And here in about, I'm gonna say August, we should have most everybody laying eggs. So except for um, this little wind out right here, she's probably gonna take a little bit longer. Of course, he's not gonna be laying eggs. You're just gonna be hopefully protecting the flock, okay? That's your job. Ebenezer, that's his name. Ebenezer, just protect the flock, please. Yep, that's my guard duck, Ebenezer. If I ever get a fence up out here, I will I will get like an actual guard dog. So it'll just, I'll train it to eat bobcats. But that's not the case right now. I find this interesting. Some of y'all may not, but I'm gonna share it with you. Anyway, I think it's interesting to see like the preparations for the trips, you know. A lot of times what happens is you have way more stuff than you end up using or there's like one particular pattern that ends up being awesome and then you've got just so many other things that really don't, ma don't matter and then you end up with a tackle cave like mine i mean anyways my bag here which has my clothes and my tackle i've carried this bag on many many trips uh it's made by a company called Takin, Takin. i don't know how you say it but they make really tough bags it is filled to the absolute brim i'm talking like even up here well that's a mask I won't even talk about that, it's so annoying. Up here, I've got socks and shirts on top of line, just all mixed in. I've got various different types of line. I've got fluorocarbon, mono, and braid. I'm carrying some light braid, like some 20, uh, some 15. I've got 12 to 15 pound fluoro. I've got six pound in there, eight pound. There's a bunch of different varieties. And then if we open up the sack, it's basically like very few clothes and mostly tackle. I have a feeling and I hope top waters are going to be key. What's really exciting about this trip is I haven't been able to go up there slam smallmouth like I do in Canada on our own baits. So I'm really looking forward to throwing these top waters out there. The jerk baits, you know, the scouts, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, I've got, if it comes down to it, just straight up dangle them. We can do that too. I've built myself a little finesse Ned box and a little swim bait box. So I've got 3.3 saucies with some quarter ounce jig heads. I've got all different size jig heads in here. I've got like all the different Ned uh, sizes. I've got the rattling Neds in here, ready to go. Just uh, all sorts of, you know, drop shot hooks. I've got very few drop shot weights. I'm counting on my boy, uh, Team Nursing Home, Matt Kringer to follow up on that. We're tackling this together, but I've got that box ready to go. Times get tough. This box is uh, zingers and saucy swimmers. So that's basically all swim baits. I've got a few buzz baits in there, some trailers and whatnot. Um, I've got other drop shot stuff in here. I have some other uh, shimmer shads and stuff, some Ketchco 10,000 fish additions, some of the really good stuff for clear water. Sakoshi bugs, these are really good on, on uh, little net heads and stuff. Um, and I've got just, just a buttload of uh, rattling neds, you know, finesse baits. In the bag here, I've got uh, three bait castings. I've got three spinnings. I've even, I'm even bringing a crappie rig. I've got three casting, three spinning. Hopefully we dial it down to one, but we might do some multi-species, so I wanted to get a little variety. Besides my crappie rod are basically all of our prototype rods. You guys have, <laughs> it's cat's out of the bag pretty much, but we've been developing rods for a long time, like our own Guggen Squad rods uh, in collaboration with Ketchco. And uh, I've had 
you know, these prototype rods forever. And a lot of you picked up on that right away when I first started fishing them. I think because they had the, the GS on the butts. But anyway, I'm just taking a bunch of these. These are rods that, you know, if I beat them up, it's whatever. They're prototype rods. They don't they don't have the final finishes or anything on them. There's, they're just uh, meant for the actions, just to test the actions. Those are perfect travel rods. I remember the first time I went up to Canada, fish smallmouth. Airline broke all of my rods, and I had some really good ones. So that was disappointing. I've kind of learned after traveling a lot with rods, like, don't take your most juicy ones. That's it, y'all. A tube, a big bag, and a passion for catching smallmouth. I would say it was a good day in the fishing world, locally and beyond. Thank you guys for tuning in to each and every single episode. Go ahead and smash that like button for good vibes and new bass boats. Also, don't forget to stay tuned for the series that uh, we're doing. Uh, I think we're gonna call it Unthawed, where, you know, hey, the ice is melted. We're going up to give it a good hard dangle on the smallmouth. If you guys have never seen the smallmouth fishing, it is incredible. And for all y'all smallmouth fans, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Alrighty, y'all, I'm wishing you the best in all of your dangles. I'll see you soon. God bless you.